There are a lot of really cool things that we can do when it comes to permissions and checking if a user has a given permission. But unfortunately, a lot of these really cool things have some or a lot of complexity. And I want to stay away from complexity as much as possible. I want the code to be clean, I want it to be easy to read and maintain, and above all, I want it to be simple. So what we have so far, I think, is simple. We have a method that accepts the user ID and it returns the roles that that user has. But we could also add an overload of this method, one that does not accept any parameters, and we could use it for the currently logged in user. So we want to call this get roles for user, and we will simply call the other get roles for user and then pass in web user dot user ID and that tool to give us the roles for the current user. Then we could take this a step further and we can have another method called has permission and we could specify or rather has role, has role. And then we could have a parameter that is the role name. Then we can get the roles with our get roles for user method. And then we can just see if the role that was supplied to this method is inside of the roles. So if roles.contains role name, then the user is in that role. Otherwise, they are not in that role. Now, I think that this is pretty simple, but there is a liability because if we mistype the name of the role that we pass to the has role method, then we have just introduced a bug into our code. And I want to avoid that as much as possible. Now, we can't 100% protect ourselves from that, but we can mitigate the issue by adding a new class and I'm going to call this class user roles and this class is going to have some public properties actually they are going to be constants that are representative of the roles that we will have like for example public const string and we already have an admin role so I'm going to create a constant called admin and I'm going to assign it the value of our role, so admin. So we can always use user roles dot admin to reference the admin role. And then we don't have to worry about mistyping the admin role name, unless if we do it here, which would not be good. But at least here, we would know that this is the only place that we need to modify or find that bug and fix it. So let's think about the other roles that we will need. We have the admin role that can do everything. They can edit and create and delete posts. They can also manage tags and users and roles. Let's also have an editor, which doesn't have the user or the role management, but it does have the ability to create, edit, and delete posts. And then we could have another one called author. And this is strictly for creating and editing their own posts. They cannot edit or modify any other post. Now, as time goes on, we might realize that we need some more roles, but that's easy enough to do. We just have to add the roles to the database and then update our user roles with those constant values. So let's look at an actual implementation here. So let's go to our account file. This is for managing the user accounts. And we only want administrators to do that or those with the admin role. So we can check to see if web user has role or rather they don't have the role of user roles dot admin, then we want to redirect them back to the admin page. So response dot redirect and that is tilde slash admin. And then we would do the same thing inside of the role page. So we can just copy this and paste it inside of role. And then the account and the role pages are completely protected. Let's change this to role mode. Now these aren't the only places that we need to do that. We also need to go to our handlers. And we first of all need to check if the user is authenticated because we did not do that there. But we also need to check to see if the user is in this role. But that's just as simple as copying this code and pasting it inside of those handlers. So let's go to the account handler and inside of the process request method, we first of all want to check to see if the user is authenticated. So if not web user is authenticated, then we want to throw a new HTTP exception 
of 401. And let's see if we have to provide a message. Yes, we do. You must log in to do this. And then we can check to see if the user is in the admin role. And if it's not, then we can throw a new HTTP exception of 401, and you do not have permission to do this. And now users that are not authenticated or they don't have the admin role cannot do anything inside of this account handler. So we can take this code and we can go to the role handler. We can paste it in at the top of the process request method, and we would have the same results there. So let's run this code now, and let's first of all add some new roles, and then we will add a new user. So we want to go to admin, but then we need to log in. So admin, and then password, and let's go to role.new, or slash new rather, and let's add the editor role, and let's, oh, we get an exception. Object reference not set to an instance of an object. And with this being highlighted, I'm afraid session is null. And it is. Oh my. Let's look at the call stack. I believe this is inside of the process request method. It is. Hmm. Oh, you know what I know the problem is. We need to add another interface here. We need to... I read only... Oh, what's it called? I think it's called session state. I read only session state. Let's see if we have something here. Yes, system.web.session state. So that should make that work. And let's run this and make sure. And if it does, then we will need to add it to our account handler as well. And really to all of our other handlers because we will be using the session state in all of them. So once again, we want to go to admin and then roll in the new. We will once again have to log in. And eventually for this landing page, we will have links that take us to other parts but we will get to that later on. So we want to go to role slash new. Now let's do editor, and there we go. So that was the code that we needed to do. And let's go ahead and add the author role. So we have admin, author, and editor. Let's go back to our Visual Studio, and let's open up the account handler, and we want to add in the I read only session state interface and the using statement for that. And let's go back. And now we want to go to admin slash account slash new. And we will add a new user, although we have to log back in since I changed that code. So admin and password, we once again go to account and then new. Let's call the user editor. Let's call the password password. And the email address really doesn't matter here. And we want this user to be an editor, so we will submit that. And we now have our editor. Let's go ahead and create the user for the author. And I know that these names are reflective of their roles, but for the lack of imagination, I'm going to stick with just admin, editor, and author. Okay, so now that we have our users and they are assigned their roles. Let's log out. And then we want to log in as, say, the editor. And then we will go to admin slash account, and we are going to be redirected to admin. Now, I'm not going to try to submit a post request to our handler, but we know that it will work because it's working here. Now, let's add permission to our tags. And let's say that administrators and editors can manage the tags. So let's start with the tag repository. And no, we don't need the tags repository. We need the tag.cshtml. And we basically want to take the code from our account or our role.cshtml, and we will paste it into our tag.cshtml. But we also need to add a check to see if the user is in the editor role. So because we are checking that the user is not in admin or that the user is not in the editor, we want to use the and operator here. So if not an admin or and not an editor, then we will redirect to admin. And then we will do the same thing inside of the handler. So let's open up the tag handler. Let's paste this code inside of process request. 
And we will also need to add the check to see if the user has been logged in. So let's grab that from our account handler and we will just paste that into our tag handler as well. Now we also need to implement that other interface, the I read only session state. So let's copy that, let's paste it here, and then we will need to add the using statement for state. And instead of redirecting if the user is not in the given roles, then we will throw a new HTTP exception of 401 and say that you do not have permission to do that. Now for our posts, we will do essentially the same thing. We want to grab the code from tag.cshtml and we want to include checking to see if the user is in the author role. So let's use the logical and operator once again, and then not web user dot has role and we want user roles dot author. Now this isn't the only thing that we need to do because if mode is edit, then we also need to ensure that if the user is in the author role, that their ID matches the author ID of the post. So after this first if statement, we will add another if statement. We need to check to see if mode is equal to edit and also if the web user dot has role and then user roles dot author. And if both of these conditions are true, then we will compare the user's ID with the author ID. So if web user dot user ID is not equal to post dot current dot author ID, then we want to redirect back to the post page and that will display the list of posts. And the path for that is tilde slash admin slash post. Now we will need to essentially do the same thing inside of the post handler. But first of all, let's look at our form because I don't think we did anything with the author ID. And I do not see that as a form field. So let's add it as a hidden field. So we want an input of type hidden. Let's set the name equal to post ID or rather post author ID. And then the value will be equal to at post and then author ID. So then we can retrieve that inside of our post handler. So before we open up that file, let's grab these if statements and let's copy them and let's go to post handler and then let's paste them at the top of process request. Now we are going to have to modify this because we don't have access to this post class, or at least we don't have access to the members of this post class. So in order to get the author ID, we will need to grab that information from the form. So let's go ahead and let's cut out that if statement. Let's paste it after we create all of these variables. We also need to add a variable for the author ID. So we want to use our context dot request dot form. And then we want to use the key of post author ID. And then we will use this author ID variable in this comparison with web user dot author ID. Now this is a string value, so we need to convert it to an integer. So we will use the convert class and then the to int 32 method. And if this comparison is false, then we need to do what we did in the other handlers. We need to throw a 401 exception stating that the user does not have permission to do that. Now we also need to check if the user is authenticated. So let's also copy that from our tag handler. Let's paste that into our post handler. And we also need to implement the I read only session state interface. We will also need to go through the remainder of this class and see where we need to use the author ID value. Because I know that earlier we just hard coded that value to be the value of one. Now that we have an actual value, we will need to do something with it. And if I remember correctly, I think all of our methods have the necessary parameters. We just need to take that author ID cast it as an integer and then pass it to the edit post and create post. Although if we are creating a post, we can just use our web user class. So web user dot user ID, and then that will work for creating the post, but it definitely won't for editing the post. So we can use the convert class once again to int 32 and pass in author ID. 
and those should be the only modifications that we need to make. So let's test this. Let's run the application. Let's log in as the author. Now we should be able to see all of our posts, but if we click on edit, then it should just redirect us back to post. And we can see that it does. Let's click on delete and see what happens. Well, we do see the form, but if we click on the submit button, then it shouldn't. Whoa, that did work. Let's go into Visual Studio and into our post handler, and let's set a breakpoint on line 50. Although I can see what the problem is. We are just checking to see if the mode is edit. So we need to add a check to see if it is delete as well. So let's stop running our application. Since we have the post handler open, let's go ahead and modify this condition. We want to check if mode is equal to edit, or if mode is equal to delete, and let's wrap that in parentheses. And then we will add the same comparison into post.cshtml. So once we do this, then our code should work. So let's run it once again. We will need to log in as the author. So author and then password. And let's go to admin slash post. Now we know that the edit works. Let's click on delete. And we can see that that now works. We are redirected back to our post list. And just for the sake of completeness, let's log out and let's log back in as the editor. Because we know that the admin works, we haven't really done anything with editor. So let's go to admin slash post. We will need to log in as the editor, and then the password is password. We will go back to admin slash post, and we should be able to now edit both of these posts or delete them. So let's edit the second post that will take us to our form and we can see that that works. So let's go back and let's delete the second post and we will see that that does indeed work as well or not. We have an exception. So let's see what we have. Null reference exception. Object reference not set to an instance of an object. And we are getting that exception on our tags. So let's first of all see what value we have for post tags. And we don't have any. So let's fix this bug. And let's use the null coalescing operator. And we'll just set it to an empty string. So that if post tags from the form is null, then it will just be an empty string. So let's run this and let's test this new functionality. After you log in as editor, just click on the delete link next to the second post. Hopefully we will not get the exception that we get whenever we submit this form. And we don't. We see that the second post was successfully deleted. So now not only can we authenticate users, but we can also control what they can do based upon the roles that are assigned to them. And now we have just a few more things that we need to do. We need to write a few lines of JavaScript and add some CSS. But before we do that, our website is currently vulnerable to cross-site request forgeries. And we will address that in the next lesson.